First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mira Fuanshak, who's going to be teaching us about fascinating newts today and the important work that Newt Patrol is doing to save them. She received her PhD from Tel Aviv University and is and her postdoc did her postdoctoral work at Stanford and is a founder of BioBlitz and faculty at San Jose State. So I'd like to welcome her to give this talk and uh, just let you know about our organization that is hosting this lecture. This is Bay Area Older Adults presentation which I will call BAO for short. We are a nonprofit organization that improves the health and well being of more than 42,000 adults age 50 plus each year through educational, outdoors, and social programs. So let's get started. Um, okay, so today I'm going to talk about a project. Um, we called Newt Patrol. Uh, it's a community science or citizen science project uh, in Los Gatos um, uh, Hills near Lexington Reservoir in the South Bay. So I'll start by talking a little bit about Newt biology in case people don't uh, know this little very cute amphibian. Um, one of the species we have here is called the California newt. And you can see its distribution range, range map on the right from iNaturalist. And the other common species in this area is the rough skin newt. That this is actually its uh, southern end of its distribution. Uh, and both species are found in our study site. Uh, some people well, it's, it's not that easy to uh, tell the two species apart. They look very similar uh, and they have pretty similar size. But if you take a closer look at their eyes, then you can see that the California newt has this like a yellow eyebrow and yellow pigment both above and below its eye, unlike the rough skin newt that has kind of dark pigment. And also, if you look at them from above, then you'll see that the California newt eyes kind of bulging out of its head compared with the rough skin newt. Um, there are actually four different species of uh, Pacific newts in this species, Tericha, uh, in California. And two of, them, two, of, two of them are part of our study. They feed on different small animals. Uh, in the aquatic phase, they live on aquatic invertebrates, such as snails, worms, and insect larva. They might even eat some red-legged frog egg masses, but don't tell anyone because those are endangered. Um, they also feed on um, terrestrial animals when they're in their terrestrial phase. They're active both day and night, unlike most salamanders. And this is probably why they have such a potent neurotoxin uh, to protect themselves. It's uh, called tetrodotoxin, which is uh, highly toxic uh, even to us. But in order to be affected, you actually need to swallow the newt, which most people are able to avoid. Um, however, um, if you touch them and you have a cut on your skin or something like that, then um, you might get some of that uh, toxin. So it's highly advisable to wash your hands after you handle a newt. Okay. Uh, only a few species of uh, predators can eat the newts because of this toxin, um, including the common garden snake, which is a beautiful snake. Some other animals, however, learned how to eat them without handling the toxin so they can remove the toxic parts and eat the rest. And we see that on the road where uh, crows and ravens would um, take them apart and eat just the parts that they want. Um, during their uh, life cycle, uh, during the year, in the dry season, they hide under um, 
uh, logs and in rodents bars and they uh, bury underground because it gets so uh, dry. In the wet season, they go out foraging and then after they get uh, enough rain, uh, we think about a threshold of about four inches of rain, they start migrating into ponds uh, and creeks in order to breathe. Um, and so in, in the ponds or creeks where they uh, go breeding, they will mate. And sometimes you'll see a ball of newts um, all mating together, or some of them trying to mate with a female. And then uh, the female will lay eggs. In the California newt, it looks like this, like an um, egg mass with a gelatinous package. Uh, usually they'll attach that into submerged plants. And because um, it's uh, somewhat transparent, you could actually see through and you could see the little embryo developing. So you could see them right here. Uh, and this is the tadpole. Um, Newt's life expectancy is, is, a, is surprisingly high. So the Rafsky Newt can live for up to 26 years, which I think is just amazing. Um, and unfortunately, they have a serious conflict with uh, roads limiting the movement uh, in the landscape. And they suffer from habitat loss of both the foraging land and their breeding habitat. And of course, I'll mention that uh, further later on. Okay, so let's uh, move into the community science act aspect. Our project started in 2017 by Anne uh, Parsons, who was uh, a Mid-Peninsula Open Space uh, Trail Patrol. And she noticed that there was very high roadkill rates of uh, uh, these newts on Alma Bridge Road. So this is our study site right here uh, in around Lexington Reservoir in Las Gatos. And you could see here the reservoir. And she started monitoring this road, Alma Bridge Road, once or twice a week um, and recorded all the different uh, dead newts that she found using iNaturalist. Uh, just on the other side, by the way, there's this project by Mid Peninsula Open Space and many other partners uh, trying to create a wildlife crossing for the mountain lions, which are much more attractive than our very cute newts. So most people, unfortunately, don't feel much for the newts. So it's pretty difficult for us to advocate for them because they're not as big and majestic as um, the mountain lions. But as you'll see, these are really interesting and, and important species and we really like to protect them. Um, okay, so the way we document them is we walk this 4.0 mile uh, road in two different sections. So each one of our volunteers would walk uh, half of this uh, road and document all the newts. I mentioned that N person started the project in 2017 and she monitored the road that year uh, just a little bit and then the next year she did a very thorough survey and she surveyed the road uh, either once or twice uh, a week for the entire season uh, and she did most of it on her own. I joined her towards the end of the season. Uh, the next year, she was unable to do uh, the field work, so she recruited a group of volunteers that we now call the Youth Patrol, and we divided the work uh, between us and started serving the road. So we did a um, very thorough survey that year, which was 2019-2020, and then last year, we did the same thing. free um, smartphone app and also a website where we document all our observations. And then this data is uh, free for everyone to access, download, play with it, uh, learn about it. Every newt is documented by a photograph so you could verify every single observation. And we added the scale this year so we could measure the newts um, very accurately and tell whether they're juveniles or adults, because it's not always clear. So this is one of our volunteers documenting a newt on the road. 
uh, as you can imagine, this is a uh, really dangerous work because we uh, work on this road that is um, people drive there like crazy. I'll show you a video in a minute. So it's really dangerous. We unfortunately most of the time only see dead newts on the road, but from time to time we do see live newts and we document them as well. Uh, and this is how our observations look like. So we take these photos and then upload them uh, to iNaturalist. We add all sorts of information. We add them to our different projects that I'll show you in a second. Um, and then uh, we could later on, as I mentioned, download the data, but we, you could also visualize that. It helps us with advocacy as well. And this is what it looks like. So Anne created this um, umbrella project that includes all our different projects. So there's one project for every year, um, 2018, 19, 20, with the different uh, newts, and then additional projects that I'll mention a few of them. Um, yeah, so this is one project, for example. This is what it looks like. This is last year's project, 2020. And you could see our volunteers and uh, you could access the observations. So just to you know, give you a few numbers, um, this is the first year that Anne just did five surveys, but then the next year she did 52 surveys uh, and counted 4,800 dead newts on the road. And uh, each year since, we documented a simil similar number, so this is 5,200 newts. And then last year, it was actually about 4,900 newts. Uh, I can explain more later if someone will be interested in that. Uh, but in general, we find about 5,000 dead newts a year. Just incredible. And uh, Mid-Peninsula Open Space District uh, hired H.T. Harvey, a consultant company, to um, study this, this problem and they used our data to create this map. So I'd like to show you the map because I think it's really interesting. It shows you that although um, we know that the newts die uh, on most of this road, there are hotspots where you find higher um, levels of um, roadkill um, rates and such as this area and this area. It's, um, and we try to think about um, different factors that could affect that. So just to orient you, this is the dam, this is Highway 17. And here we have two different um, creeks, uh, seasonal creeks that go into uh, the reservoir. This is Lime Kiln, uh, Canyon and Soda Spring Canyon. There are three different trailheads, okay? And um, there's a quarry that, uh, a that is um, that attributes some of the trucks that we see on the road. Most of the trucks we see on the road go uh, just to here to the quarry, and then uh, there's also the Los Gatos uh, Rowing Club, which uh, brings a lot of traffic. Uh, especially you'd see them on very specific times of the day. You'll see people rushing through um, to try and get their kids to the um, lessons. So they drive super fast and it's very really scary to be on the road when they are there. There are also many people to come, uh, that go there for hiking uh, to one of each one of these trailheads. And uh, there are some private uh, homes on the south section of the road. So these people also use the road. So you can obviously see that there is a huge conflict here. Um, okay, so just to show you a little bit of data, these are the new roadkill uh, rates that we find on each month uh, during these four years of study. And you can see that the general trend is similar. So the newts start migrating around November. Uh, they need a threshold of about four inches of rain and then they start migrating. Uh, they also start foraging. Some of the newts we find on the road are just foraging. But other newts, um, 
because they spend the summer on the hills around the reservoir, they need to get from the hills into the reservoir in order to reproduce. This is where they lay their eggs, this is where they mate. And then the uh, tadpoles spend their time, time in uh, the reservoir uh, or in the creeks that leads to the reservoir. And uh, it takes them time to finish their cycle and then they have to migrate back into the hills because that's where they'll spend their summer. Uh, and the road goes all the way around the lake um, and yeah, it's not very helpful there. Okay, so just to show you uh, the uh, rainfall map here, um, uh, graph here, you can see that there is some impact of rainfall on the, uh, on the newts activity, uh, so on the roadkill numbers that we see. But uh, rainfall is not the only component here because you can see that even on a dry month, like um, um, on March 2020, uh, there was no rain, absolutely no rain. And we still found uh, over 900 dead newts on the road that year. So that was really interesting. And it seems that after they get their initial threshold, and they start going, they just keep going till the, they're done. And we see the last newts uh, usually in May, but most of them are already gone uh, in April. Okay, so you can see that most of the newts migrate uh, during the winter month. Um, so we found high uh, roadkill counts on the morning after rain events. And so these are information, both this and the figures are from a great report that Anne wrote uh, after the end of this season. And I will upload this report to our blog. Uh, I'll give you the link at the end. And you can access uh, some information there. You could uh, look at all our data uh, through the blog. Uh, okay, so we found high uh, roadkill mortality even when there was no rain, and uh, even if there was no rain just a few days before, um, before the survey. The only time we didn't find any newts were when there was uh, frost conditions on the road, which makes sense. And I'd like to end this part with this important quote that this is one of the highest reported rates of um, amphibian mortality uh, on roads ever re recorded globally. So this is, this is a huge problem and most people are not aware of it or they don't think it's important because they don't think newts are important. Um, another study that we did last year was uh, something we called the longevity study where we were trying to, um, to tell how long the newts persist on the road. So, um, we we find them uh, on our survey as i said once or tw when we do it once or twice a week but we don't know after they die how long they actually stay there for um and I, we did uh, six experiments last year it's still a preliminary study so we might do a few more this year um and we marked all the nits that we found with flags and then uh, we check them after seven hours, 24 hours, and again after three or four days. And we repeated this on rainy weeks and dry weeks to see what's the difference. And this is what it looked like. So there was a dead newt on the road somewhere here. And then you could see the flag marking that newt, or you could see it here. And sometimes there were so many flags, it was just so obvious because when you look at the road here, you can't actually see the newts, right? Um, they totally blend in. But when you mark them with the flags, it was much more obvious. So look at that. So many newts. And this is just one regular morning of survey. Okay, and on the map, it looks like this. Oh, this, that's a different one, different experiment. And this is where we, oh, just to show you what it looks like. Sorry about that. So this is the newt on the first day, 9 a.m. And then 5 p.m. the same day after a few hours of rain. You see that they quickly start to disintegrate. 
after um, a few days, you can't even identify them any longer as newts. So if we do the survey at this point, we won't be able to identify this thing and say, oh, that's a newt. Uh, which means that if we look back uh, at our data, it's very different. And just to show you uh, in numbers, then after uh, 24 hours, we already had 2 to 25% of the newts missing. And after uh, three days, uh, up to 44% of the newts were gone. And after uh, four days, up to 62% of the newts were missing, which means that if we check the road only uh, twice a week, we could be missing 50 to 60% of the newts, meaning that these numbers that you see here should be much higher, okay? Um, I want to talk just a little bit about other animals because there are plenty of other animals that cross the road or try crossing. And well, if you look at all of them together, you can't see a thing because there's so many newts. You see there are over 96% of the roadkill is newts. But uh, there are lots of other animals, uh, plenty of insects, but also some amphibians and reptiles and a uh, few mammals, few birds even. And a fish. They once had a fish on the road. Probably not a road kid, though. Um, so I just want to mention a few of the species. Uh, we had different uh, birds that we found and different mammals, like these interesting rodents. We also found many different reptiles, uh, including uh, daughter snakes, ring neck snakes coast night snake which is a really interesting snake not often seen of course we see them all dead so it's not a very um, uh, happy finding we also find many other amphibian species uh, many bullfrogs and uh, frogs and toads but we also find uh, arboreal salamanders and slender salamanders and even a california oh sorry a santa cruz black salamander which is an endangered species. Um, we found out that some of the newts are uh, getting hit by bikes and not cars. Uh, there's very high traffic of both cars and bikes on, uh, on the road. In each of our surveys, we actually uh, count the uh, traffic that we see. We count cars and trucks and bikes and pedestrians. Um, so we have all that number and we upload everything into our uh, journal posts on iNaturalist on every one of these surveys. Um, we also created a new project for the animals that were seen alive on the road. We call it the Still Alive Crossing Alma Bridge Road project. And just last week I, I saw two gray foxes uh, right after they crossed the road. That was pretty cool. So it's, it's always fun to see them alive. Um, OK, and now I'd like to talk about the possible solutions. Uh, so first, I'd like to mention different landowners and businesses along the road. So uh, land on the road belongs to Santa Clara County Parks, to Mid Peninsula Open Space District to Valley Water, uh, San Jose Water, Santa Clara County Roads and Airport um, is responsible for the road. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a quarry and the Los Gatos Rowing Club, and then the homeowners. And yeah, I just want to show them quickly on the map again. So all these different things are responsible for some of the traffic we see. Uh, also, on busy days, some, if there's a, an accident on Highway 17 right here, then we might get some traffic from Highway 17 uh, to go through uh, Alma Bridge Road, which, as you can see, uh, it's not a very fast um, uh, path, but people actually drive very, very fast here. And um, yeah, so that could be part of the problem as well. But as I mentioned, there's the trailhead and the Los Gatos Rowing Club. There are also fishermen 
that come fishing uh, on the road, but I don't think that's too many people. And um, I also mentioned the Highway 17 wildlife crossing, which is right across the road from uh, our study area. We, all, we do have some allies that help us with advocacy that I wanted to quickly mention. Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society and the Sierra Club has been very helpful in trying to uh, find a solution to this issue. But unfortunately, the different authorities uh, weren't very um, helpful uh, so far. But we're hoping that would change because um, uh, Mid Peninsula Open Space District owns uh, a property right here around the middle of the road that they would like to uh, develop. So they would like to build an additional parking lot right next to it and another trailhead um, that would obviously attract more um, cars to the area and uh, get more traffic in. Uh, so the board uh, of directors asked them to do additional studies to make sure that they won't um, impact the new population. And uh, they basically wanted to, to check what the new population is like at the study site. I would like to talk a little bit about possible solutions um, in general. Uh, so one possible solution is to post signs, and these signs were placed about a year and a half ago by, by uh, county parks. And although they're great and very pretty, we know that signs are not a long-term solution because even if people will slow down initially, then over time they will uh, learn to ignore the signs and they're not very helpful. Um, in addition, the newts are actually so small and uh, almost completely blend in with the road. It's very difficult to notice them. Uh, so I, I don't know that this is very helpful, but it's cool. Uh, another option would be to fix some of the culverts. Culverts are um, passes under the underground passes under the road um, to let water out. On the other side, there are many creeks and sips along the road. But as you can see, the culverts on Alma Bridge Road are pretty useless. This is one of them opening in mid-air. So even if some newts may survive uh, the fall here, obviously they can't go back up and, and use the culvert to go back. Uh, we are hoping that county roads would fix some of these culverts. And we were very uh, disappointed uh, last year in the fall to see that the county roads was repaving uh, large parts of the road without fixing any of the culverts, without implementing anything uh, to help the newts. Um, the only thing they did was actually create a pretty cool uh, newt monument and that we found pretty exciting. This summer, they actually repaved the entire road again. And I'm not sure why. And other than not implementing any um, solution for the newts. I'm worried that they won't be uh, very excited to um, fix anything in the future since they just repaved the road. We'll see. Another option we see with amphibians elsewhere is assisted migration. Uh, when people go out on a specific night uh, to a very specific um, area and they either collect um the amphibians in traps or they search for them and help them cross uh the dangerous road unfortunately our road is very dangerous i don't think this is feasible but also um the other problem is that we found in our data that the newts don't just go on a rainy night they don't just go on very specific uh, times of the year, they actually go after after they start migrating. They will uh, be out there almost every day, uh, depending on on weather and other conditions. So we don't think this is a very feasible option. In addition, uh, it's illegal to uh, park on the road or even in the parking lots uh, at nighttime. It is legal to drive the road and you know kill some newts, but it is illegal to drive. 
uh, to park anywhere there. So we can't actually do it even if we wanted to. Uh, another option that might be interesting would be to create breeding ponds on the other side of the road, on the uh, hill side of the road. And we do know that newts sometimes reproduce in uh, old uh, water systems or other uh, structures that hold water for long enough uh, time. And we wonder if this might be a feasible solution. Road closure is often the best solution because um, then you obviously protect the newts. Uh, you could have gates that will allow uh, certain traffic to go through, but so many other people don't need to drive the road if they don't, they don't have to. Of course, uh, people that live there or work there might need to do it, but otherwise um, there are ways to, uh, to limit the traffic and this could be an amazing solution, but so far nobody was interested in implementing that. Um, another uh, possible solution is elevated roads, and our contact person in USGS um, is very much uh, advocating for this solution, which we think would be uh, great. Uh, this is like a, like a tiny bridge a tiny bridge for the newts so it will create a little um, bridge just above the existing road that will allow for the newts to cross under uh, the road safely and this has been tested in the sierras in the past few years there's a really great document by usgs um, showing different solutions and this is one of them uh, to amphibian road kill problem and we think this this might be great. Uh, so far, the different authorities were not very excited about it. Um, another contact person we have in UC Davis was trying to get um, a grant proposal uh, to test different um, structures, but unfortunately didn't get uh, enough support from the different authorities and wasn't able to secure a grant. We're hopeful that uh, next year or the year after, something will start changing. Um, OK, so at this point, I'd like to uh, show you the blog that uh, I created last year uh, for a project. You could read more about the newts there. Um, and you could sign for um, our uh, mailing list. If you'd like to know more about this project, if you'd like to help us with advocacy uh, from time to time, or if you're interested in joining our team and help with field surveys, we will start recruiting uh, a few more volunteers soon. So if this is something you'd like to hear more about, please sign uh, to our uh, mailing list. Um, and that will be wonderful. And then uh, this is the link. and. Here, I'd like to stop for a little, uh, for a short while and show you a, sh uh, a short video that we created. Okay. So this is a video we created. You could see the newts traveling um, from their summer habitat. Okay. There are they spend a year hidden underground, or the summer, hidden underground. Then after the rain, they start migrating. And soon we'll see where they're going. So you might have seen newts when you uh, go hiking. You might see them crossing uh, trails. And I'm always worried about them because they're so difficult to see, even on a trail. I mean, of course, it's difficult to see them when you're driving, but even when you walk. I don't know if you might step on a newt or not, but there are many uh, bike riders on our trails, and we already know that some of the newts get hit by bikes. Uh, so this is one of the places they try to reach. Uh, this is Limekiln Creek uh, when it runs. It doesn't run every year, but some, some years it does, and it could create a good habitat for the newts if the water would stay there long enough. And you could almost see that there are newts here, yeah, 
in the water, underwater. And if we go in, we could see them. Aren't they cute? Look at that. So, um, yeah, this is this is a large culvert under uh, the road, which is obviously great for um, wildlife movement. And I've seen newts crossing uh, the road underneath. So you can see how they move so slowly, which might explain why they're so likely to get hit by a car or something else on the road. Yeah, sometimes it gets pretty wet out there, but it's how they like it. And yeah, this is what it looks like. So you see, it's so difficult to notice this little newt crossing the road. Um, and sometimes when we see a live one, and which doesn't happen too often, unfortunately, uh, I always try to take photos. So I'll get closer to the newt. And once you get closer to them, they actually freeze. They just stop. They don't move at all. And yeah, it kind of explains why they get hit by cars so often. They walk very slowly, and they would often freeze. Sometimes they'll even um, make their like posture when they show their um, orange color, trying to scare you off, which doesn't work well with cars. And there are so many cars on this road. We sometimes count over 100 cars uh, during a two hour walk. Uh, depending on the day, if it's a weekday or a weekend, and if there are um, lessons at the time in the boat club. Uh, this is one of our newts. And then this is how we document them. So when we find a dead newt, we take photos, we sometimes add a scale, uh, if we can, and we try to get off the road as quickly as possible, we also remove the newts so that we won't uh, count them again but by mistake. But you see that there's not much left of them after a couple of days in the sun. Here's another one. And yet another one. But this one is actually alive, which is pretty fun. And when we do see a live one, we are so happy to help it cross to the other side of the road. Of course, if you do handle a newt, you have to wash your hands uh, with the soap, soap later uh, because they do have a very potent neurotoxin and you don't want to get that through um, a cut in your hand or something like that. To get really affected by the neurotoxin, you have to swallow a newt, which you could pretty easily avoid, I think. So yeah, now the newt is free to go back to where it was going. Okay, so this was a deer. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you was our um, I naturalist uh, project that I showed you earlier. So you can see all this is our umbrella project. You can see um, the different projects for uh, every year that we did a study, uh, the other road kills, and still alive, and all sorts of other interesting things. So you can find uh, much more information right here. Okay, so let's go back to this slide. And with this, I think I can actually stop sharing. Thank you so much for watching. Well, thank you, Mirev, again. And uh, last comment is uh, thank you, Mirev, for your presentation and your passion in protecting these newts and this informative presentation. So thank you again. And thank you all for joining us this morning um, and learning about Mirev's fascinating projects. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. And thanks for all our amazing volunteers that <laughs> did all this work yes <laughs> take care guys bye bye bye